Some Pokémon just aren't built for challenge runs, and Mantine is a prime example of this. Mantine has exceptional special defense but doesn't have any great offensive capabilities, and when that's combined with a lackluster move pool it's going to be incredibly difficult to make Mantine anything but a middle of the road Pokémon. Mantine is going to be a tricky run, but we're going to do everything we can to give it the best possible time. And now before we get into the run, I want to say thank you once again for the support you showed Kangaskhan. That was such a fun run, and I am so proud of Kangaskhan on the leaderboard. And if you enjoyed that video and you're back for more, please do remember to click the subscribe button. If you enjoyed this content, please do leave it a like. If you've got anything to say, leave it in the comments below. And if you wish to support me further, there's the option of joining the channel and becoming a HM friend or supporting me on Patreon. And with all that said and done, let's now get on to looking at our challenge Pokémon. We have picked up our starter Mantine and it is level 5 with 22 HP. So already that tells us this is going to be a run relying on our bulk. We have two moves at the moment with Tackle and Bubble. Our attack is 10, our defense is 13, our special attack is 14, our special defense is 20, and our speed is 13. And the overlay has changed ever so slightly in this run. You will now be able to see the live updating stats of our Pokémon over the stat totals box. And as always, I'll show you the very first encounter we have, and it's with a level 3 Hootoot. It's three shots to take it out, and with Hootoots knocked out, we'll make our way towards Mr. Pokemon's house, and as Mr. Pokemon and Professor Oak are yakking with us, I'll take this opportunity to tell you I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Mantine. Now that might sound a little bit counterintuitive at first sight, but Mantine is water flying, so the only Pokemon that the rival could have that would not be a type advantage for us is the Totodile, hence why I picked the Totodile in this run. And talking of Totodile, that's who we're up against now. It's quite a few tackles because we don't have the greatest attack, but we do eventually knock it out and we were in absolutely no danger of being knocked out. So we make our way back to Professor Elm and we tell the policeman there that the rival's name is Triple Question Mark. We get the Pokeballs from the Professor's aid, and with that the challenge run well and truly has commenced. So we start backtracking back all the way through Cherry Grove City and up towards Violet City. Our first destination in Violet City is the Sprout Tower. Now in Sprout Tower we're going to be facing a lot of Bell Sprouts. it's sort of in the name isn't it? And the first Bell Sprout we go up against here will get us our next new move. This is Supersonic at level 10 and we're going to be using a lot of confusion strategies throughout this run. Unfortunately, Supersonic is only a 55% accuracy move, so it's sort of like flipping a very biased coin. However, there are occasions where flipping that coin will be to our advantage. We also get the Flash HM at the very top of Sprout Tower, and now that that's all done and dusted, we will make our way into Falconer's Gym. Falconer's Mantine and I's first gym leader together, and he leads with Pidgey. We don't really have too much great attacking-wise at the moment, because Bubble is a very weak move, so we decide to confuse the Pidgeotto and it hurts itself in confusion. Bubble does next to nothing at all, but it is just about chipping away at it, and a combination of Bubble Chips and Supersonic Damage later, we have defeated Falconer and we have obtained the Zephyr Badge in a time of 11 minutes and 15 seconds. Our next port of call is going to be Azalea Town. Before we go to Azalea Town though, we're going to pick up the most important item in the game, the Paralyzed Cure Berry off that tree there. We'll make our way through Azalea Town proper and into the Ilex Forest. In the Ilex Forest we have the HM friends. The first one to show their face today is Psyduck. Psyduck is going to be helping us out with Surf, Strength, Waterfall and Whirlpool. And it's just a single Great Ball later and it goes into our party. And the second HM friend of course is going to be Paris. Paris is going to be helping us out with Cut and Flash. The also be helping out with Dig the Field Move, and if we need us at the very end, Paris will also be helping us out with Sweet Scent. But with both of those safely in our party, we can exit the Ilex Forest and make our way into Kurt's house, where he's telling us all about the shenanigans going on in Slowpoke Well. And with nothing to report about Team Rocket in there, we'll make our way straight into the gym. In the gem, we face Bugcatcher Benny. He's got the entire Weedle line, and off this Weedle line, we are going to get our first properly decent attacking move. At level 18, we get Bubble Beam, which is more than three times as strong as Bubble, for a sacrifice of 10 PP. At very long last, we have a move that could reliably one-hit a lot of Pokémon. That has been a real struggle for us in the early parts of the game, and that's why the timer's already at 20 minutes nearly as we're facing Bugsy. He is, of course, 
course a bug type specialist he leads with a metapod that goes down in one shot and we're on to the scyther it's a three shot on the scyther with bubble beam and our final pokemon is kakuna it's a one shot on the kakuna and with that we have defeated bugsy in a time of 19 minutes and 40 seconds on the nose our next battle will be against rival number two and rival two can be a little bit tricky however we do of course have shared type resistance against him Quite often during these runs, when we run a water type, we will have the type disadvantage. However, in this case, it's just mutual resistance, which means that we're not in any real danger of fainting, but this is going to be a very arduous battle. Bubble Beam is actually our best choice at this point because of our low physical attack, and it takes six shots to eventually knock out the Croconaw. But six shots is better than reset, I suppose. And with the rival taken care of for now, we can make our way into the Ilex Forest. And we'll have a little chat with the Cutting Master. He'll give us the HM for cuts. We'll teach that to Paris. And we'll also get a Headbutt TM. Even though we're not a strong physical attacker, Headbutt is still a very good move to have on your learn set. Because it does have the opportunity to flinch the opponent's Pokemon. And with half decent speed, it is something to keep in mind if the going gets tough. We also get the bike here in Goldenrod City, we get the coin case, and we give our Mantine a lovely little haircut. And while we're in the underground, we'll also teach Headbutt in place of Tackle. Tackle is a very, very poor move for us at this point in the game, so Headbutt is a major upgrade. We exit the underground and go into the game corner where we purchase our Abra. Abra is going to be helping out with teleports and saving an awful lot of time in an awful lot of places. And the final HM friend to join the party is Kenya. Kenya, of course, is going to be helping us out with Fly. Only the one move on Kenya, but still one of the most important moves out there. We'll go down and get Dig in the National Park. And the very last thing we need to do before taking on Whitney is have a little chat with Floria. Flory is going to tell us all about the tree that's blocking the way, and I'm sure we can deal with that, but first, we've got to beat up a cow. Before we get to the cow, though, we've got to go through the Clefairy, and it poison stings us. We had a smidgen of luck there against the Clefairy, because poison sting didn't poison us, and we're on to the rollout. In this instance, though, the cow starts to roll, and there is no stopping her when she gets going. Or at least that's what we thought on Battle 1. Maybe Battle 2 will go a little bit differently. We get disabled on Bubble Beam, which is a little bit annoying, and then we start trying to confuse the cow. It doesn't work on turns 1 or 2, but eventually on turn 3, we do get the confusion off. She hits herself in confusion, and we start to Bubble Beam. She hits herself once more. That brings Bubble Beam into KO range, and with that, we have defeated Whitney in a time of 27 minutes and 53 seconds. Up next is Ecritique City. Before we get there though, we've got to pick up the Squirts bottle from the eavesdropping lady in the flower shop. She won't talk to you unless you speak to her sister first. How very rude of her. And we also need to beat up this fake tree. This fake tree has been causing no ends of issue for the people in Goldenrod City and Violet City, so we will be very, very kind and get rid of it for them. For our reward, we're going to go into the Kimono Girls in the Dance Theatre, and we're going to take on a Jolteon. Now, the reason I chose to show this Jolteon battle is look at our special defence. We took a Thundershock to the face, and we didn't even get into the yellow. That is how bulky we are, and that's going to be incredibly important for how we play the rest of this run. We don't so much have to worry about the electric type moves, it's the rock type moves that are particularly going to be painful. And our reward for defeating the Kimono Girls, of course, is Surf. We replace Bubble with Surf because Bubble is just an all-around bad move, and we head towards the Lake of Rage. We'll pick up the Rare Candy at the Lake of Rage, and then we're going to get Hidden Power. We're not going to be using Hidden Power for quite some time. To save on menuing, though, we will teach it right now. I opted for Hidden Power Dragon this time, but I was mostly focused on the Claire battle for this. If you're not able to one-shot Claire's Dragonair, it can be one of the most brutal battles in all of the Johto run. And with this being a very first impression run, that was my gut instinct. We'll have to see later if that was the right play. In the meantime though, we're going to take on the rival for the third time. He's got a Haunter that goes down in one shot, so he sends out Magnemite. Magnemite doesn't even get a chance to attack because we surf all over it. We do exactly the same on the Zubat, and that just leaves his Croconaw. We get a critical hit flinching headbutt on turn one, and a couple of headbutts later it has been knocked out. And that was an incredibly smooth Rival 3 there, time of 33 minutes and 47 seconds. So now we'll release the beasts in the underground of the Burn Tower, we'll escape rope out of there, and with that we can move into Morty's gym. Morty, of course, is the poison and ghost type specialist, don't let his badge name fool you. He is both there, and he will lead with Ghastly. Now, generally, water types have a really huge advantage at this gym because we learn Surf, and Stab Surf is a huge base power, so we just sweep through 
all four of his Pokemon in one hit. And with that, we have got Morsi's badge in a time of exactly 36 minutes. That is a really, really good bit of progress for Mantine, who was struggling early game. We'll make our way towards Olivine City now, and the first thing we're going to do is pick up the Strength HM from the man in the cafe. Psyduck has volunteered to learn that, and we'll climb the lighthouse while we're here. At the top of the lighthouse, we see Jasmine, and Jasmine is taking care of a very poor sick Ampharos, although I'm still a little bit suspicious of her. We'll oblige her this time, though, and head over the open seas towards Cyanwood City, where we'll pick up the secret potion from the man in the medicine shop. I'm fairly certain those two are in cahoots, and we are some kind of smuggler for them, but we don't have any proof quite yet. And while we're here in Cyanwood City, we might as well take on Chuck. He is a fighting type specialist and we have the type advantage over fighting types. However, that's not going to help us out when we come to this Polyrath because it is a water type, so our best option is to confuse it before we get confused with Dynamic Punch. We then start to headbutt it to give it the old flinch and confusion and just brute force was enough to knock it out on our very first try. So we have 40 minutes and 44 seconds for our fifth badge. Chuck also gives us a Dynamic Punch TM, but we're some kind of seat pancake, so we're not going to be able to use it. Instead, we'll have a little chat with Chuck's wife and we'll get Fly. But even though we're the flying type, we can't unfortunately learn Fly, so Kenya's going to be doing it for us. In the meantime, we're going to take on the Lake of Rage with the Red Gyarados, and here's where I wish Gyarados was a Dragon type, because we'd have used Hidden Power Dragon to take it out in just a couple of shots. As it happened though, we had to mix Surf and Headbutt, and we almost fainted. We didn't know, and with that we can talk to Lance the Liar with the Flyers. Nothing of great interest happened with Lance though, so we'll just cut to the very end, where he gives us the Whirlpool TM, which we can learn, but we're not going to because that move is absolutely terrible, and we'll take on Price. Price is the Ice-type leader with a couple of Water-types and a Ground-type mixed in there for fun, and he will lead with Seal. Our Achilles heel really is the water type. We don't have anything strong to knock them out whatsoever. You can see that here with this seal because every time we try and knock it out it just goes to sleep. We brute force our way through the seal eventually though and we're on to the dugong. The dugong has much less luck than the seal did and doesn't even get a chance to go to sleep and we headbutt it out of the arena. The last Pokemon's a bit of a damp squib for Morty because it's weak to water so a single surf later we've knocked it out and we have the Glacier Badge in a time of 46 minutes and 12 seconds. So even though we are quite a middle of the road Pokemon we're making a lot of progress and in a break with tradition we're actually going to do our housekeeping after the sixth badge. So we'll pick up the rare candy from Violet City and we'll go and grab the return TM from Goldenrod. We don't have hands so we can't punch anything in the mouth this time. We'll grab the rare candy from Goldenrod and now we'll ascend the lighthouse to give the secret potion to Jasmine. Jasmine allegedly gives it to Amphi there, but I'm fairly certain Amphi's just acting. But we will dig our way out of there and take her on once and for all. It's time to confront Jasmine and her nefarious ways after beating up our Kangas Khan last week. She is, of course, a Steel-type specialist, and she leads with Magnemite. If we weren't such a speedy sea pancake, we'd be having issues here with our full times weakness to Electric. But we outspeed them when we knock them out before I even get a chance to finish this sentence. Talking of finishing this sentence, I finished the battle before I finished it and we've defeated Jasmine in a time of 48 minutes and 14 seconds. Let's now move on to Goldenrod City where the fourth rival battle is waiting for us. This time he's hiding deep in the underground but we will find him nonetheless. This one could be a little tricky because his starter is now fully evolved and of course we still don't have anything great to take it out. He leads with Golbat though and we take that down into the red with a surf. We hit ourselves with that confusion though and Mantine is very very envious it's got to wait another 10 levels for its own confuse ray. Snaps out a confusion for the Magnemite though and one shots it. Exactly the same happens on the Haunter. Out comes the Sneasel and to my surprise we didn't one shot it. That was a little bit scary for me because that made me think that the lead could be a lot more difficult than I anticipated. We tried confusing the fur alligator, but it had none of it, so we just started headbutting it instead. Fortunately for us, it kept on flinching, and that meant we could knock it out without too much pain whatsoever. And at level 40, we learn Wing Attack. Wing Attack is going to be replacing Headbutt. Even though Headbutt really helped us out in the last battle, Wing Attack is a base 60 power stab move, so we really cannot turn our noses up at that whatsoever. And after knocking out the rival for the fourth time, we rescue the lovely people in the radio tower, we get the pink bow off Mary, and while we're here we'll get the radio card so that we can move that Snorlax over in Kanto. We'll fly back to Mahogany Town, and now it's a quick jaunt east through the very chilly ice path. While we're in here, we'll grab the TM for Waterfall, and we'll also get the Nevermelt Ice to boost our Ice-type moves. And with nothing else to do in the Ice Path, we find ourselves in Blackthorn City, where the only thing we have to do in here is take on Claire and her Dragon-type gym. 
Claire, of course, is the actual Dragon-type master of this game, and she will lead with Dragonair. It's a one-shot with a critical hit with Hidden Power Dragon, and here is where a bit of a disaster happens. Hidden Power Dragon is not a one-shot, so we're going to have to try again and hope for the best with the Paralyzed Cure Berry. We get paralyzed on the very first turn, but the Paralyzed Cure Berry kicks in. On to the second Dragonair, and the Thunder Wave gets a Gen 2 miss. And on the third Dragonair, I was very confused, because it turns out this was a damage range the entire time. We're on to the Kingdra now, though, and Dragon is the only move that's super effective. We didn't get her into healing range, but she was in two-shot range. So for Kingdra, Hidden Power Dragon really was the perfect play. And with that battle finished, we have our eighth and final Jotonian Gym Badge. And with a time of 1 hour, 4 minutes and 19 seconds, we are on a roughly similar pace to Electabuzz at this point in the run. It could all change though, we've still got the Elite Four left to go, but before we battle the Elite Four, we're going to take on this cool trainer here. He's got a Parasect who'll be important in the very next run, and we've also got a Golduck to take care of as well. And at level 49, we can learn Confuse Ray. Confuse Ray is just better supersonic, even though we sacrifice a little bit of PP. I really don't think that's an issue when we're 100% accurate. Accurate now. And at the very end of Victory Road, we now have the final rival battle to take care of. This time we one-shot the Sneasel and we're on to the Magneton. Magneton's a one-shot with Surf as well and he sends out Golbat. Golbat isn't a one-shot so we get confused once more, but this time we don't hit ourselves with confusion. We don't get Cursed off the Hauntor as well because we break through the confusion. So he tries again with his Kadabra and we do hit ourselves in confusion. We don't take much damage at all though and we're on to the Feraligator. We wing attack the Feraligator and get a lucky critical hit as we get hit by future sights, but our huge special defense means it barely tickled us. Another wing attack later and the Feraligator is out of there, and we say thank you to the rival for another challenging set of battles. Now that we're in the Pokemon League though, we will heal up our Pokemon, and now it's time to say thank you to the HM friends. We say thank you to Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck, and to Paris. This time along, they're taking a little vacation over the pond to the United States, so we'll see those a little bit later on. In the meantime, time we'll pick up our four full restores and we'll take a little look at the stats at the league. Of course the stats are on the right hand side of the screen but let's see them in big. We've got 149 HP at level 49, our moves are Surf, Wing Attack, Confuse Rate and Hidden Power. We have just 77 in attack, 104 in defense, 114 in special attack, a whopping 173 in special defense and 104 in speed. And our first Elite Four member is Mr. Saint Germain himself, one of our HM friends here on the channel. It's Will, and he leads with Zartu. It's a two-shot with Surf on the Zartu to knock it out, and out comes the Jinx. And out comes the Jinx. It's a two-shot with Surf as her attack misses, and he sends out Slowbro. Yes, again, we're against a water type, and he has Amnesia, so Hidden Power Dragon is doing the grand sum of nothing whatsoever. We don't get paralyzed off Body Slam on both turns, though, and we just about scrape by. And his penultimate Pokemon is Zartu. We take no risks and confuse it straight away. It hurts itself on the first turn, but it hits us with a Psychic on the second turn. Surf takes it down into the red as he got into a healing loop, and his final Pokemon is Executor. We wing attack, but we don't one shot, and Psychic knocks us out. And back to the start of the league we go. We get a lucky critical hit on Zartu number one this time though, and we get another critical hit straight after on the Jinx. We're on full health as the Slowbro comes out, and we use Hidden Power. He doesn't set up Amnesia, but I didn't seem to notice in this run, because I go to Wing Attack, which is my normal pattern against the Slowbro. We use a Special Attack, followed by Physical Attack. We knock it out all the same though, and we're on to the second Zartu. So we're at a slightly higher health value as we finally knock out the Zartu this time, and that just brings us back to the Executor. Wing attack on the Executor takes it down to half health as he reflects, but we manage to hit through the reflect to knock it out in a time of 1 hour, 12 minutes, and 11 seconds. And just before we take on Will, it's time to say goodbye to Hidden Power Dragon. Will has that pesky Crobat, and I think Icy Wind is just the ticket to take it down a peg or two. But before we can even think about the Crobat, we've got to get through the rest of his Pokémon. Wing Attack isn't a one-shot on his first Pokémon, and having such low physical attack, we swap to Surf for the Fortress. It's two shots on the Fortress, so no going boom this time, and we carry on surfing on the Muck. Muck minimizes and poisons us because we missed our second surf, so that puts us on a clock for the rest of this battle. Here comes the pesky Crobat and Icy Wind misses because of the double team. We miss a second turn in a row and this is where the battle falls apart. We have no choice but to take another reset because he's full restored. Let's try again, hopefully this time we'll get a little bit better accuracy luck. I surf on the Ariados this time because we know we can knock it out in one shot. I surf all over the fortress and yet again it doesn't go boom, so we're back onto the muck. 
We get a critical hit with Surf to take Muck deep into the red, and we hit it on our second turn this time. So we're back to where we lost last time with the Crobat. He doesn't use double team and goes straight for the wing attack. That means two Icy Winds knocks it out, and his final Pokemon is Venomoth. We surf all over the Venomoth to knock it out in two shots, and we've defeated Koga in a time of 1 hour, 13 minutes, and 51 seconds. Up next is Bruno, the fighting type specialist, and for once we have a type advantage. We use Wing Attack on the Hitmontop to take it into the red, a second Wing Attack later and we've knocked it out, and that brings us on to Hitmonchan. He Thunder Punches us, but it only takes off 30 HP. Our huge special defense combined with Hitmonchan's very poor special attack meant that was not something to worry about. We get through the Onyx in one shot, and then Machamp Rock Slides us. We're able to take care of it in two shots, and that just leaves Legs the Hitmonlee. Double Kick does barely anything at all, so it's another two Surfs, and we are through Bruno on our first attempt. Time of 1 hour, 14 minutes and 35 seconds, let's now see if Karen can stop us in our tracks. She leads with that pesky Umbreon who's known for status conditioning, but this time it just goes straight for Faint Attack. That is exactly the kind of luck we've been looking for on this run, even though it takes several hits to knock the Umbreon out. We do eventually get through it and we're on to the Gengar. Gengar licks us instead of cursing us and we knock it out in two shots. She sends out Murkrow when we use Icy Wind. It's a one-shot critical hit with Icy Wind and we're on to the Houndoom. Surf is super effective against the Houndoom so that poses no issue whatsoever and her final Pokemon is Vileplume. We don't get paralysed from the Stun Spore so it's two super effective wing attacks to defeat Karen on our very first attempt. Time of 1 hour, 15 minutes and 23 seconds for Karen, and there's now only one more obstacle between us and the Hall of Fame. It's Lance the Liar with the Flyers. He leads with Gyarados, and this is where Mantine's weaknesses really start to show. Water types are our bogeymen in this run, because we have nothing to efficiently knock them out. We eventually take out this one with a Surf and we're onto the Dragonite, and here is where a bit of a disaster happened. Icy Wind is not a one-shot. Icy Wind is a base 55 power move, it's 4 times super effective against Dragonite. I really thought a base 220 power move would be enough, but our special attack is so low that it just does not cut the mustard. We are going to have to rely on Confusion, because one hit themselves in Confusion combined with an Icy Wind is enough to knock them out, but it's still going to be a very very tough battle. We get through his two Thunder Waving Dragonite though, and we are onto the Aerodactyl. Aerodactyl in this case is a Scarodactyl because Rock Slide is super effective, and his final Pokemon is Dragonite. Icy Wind takes it deep into the red, but Outrage crits and knocks us out. That was a disaster, and we did not get that same kind of luck for a very, very long time. This attempt is about 8 minutes after that last attempt we just saw together, and we did not have the luck against the Dragonite until this particular moment. However, all my runs are done on first impressions, so I was determined to get through without having to do a redo for Mantine. I wanted to make Mantine proud of our work together. I thought Mantine could still do this, but it was a struggle. We get through the Aerodactyl on 66 HP, and we're on to the next Dragonite. He uses Hyper Beam instead of Outrage this time though, and knocks us out. Let's try this once more. We have spent a solid 20 minutes on this Lance fight, and for something that I thought would be easy with Icy Wind, I was getting a little bit stressed at this point, but our Raymond the Mantine is a fighter. He keeps on persevering, he confuses the first Dragonite and knocks it out with Icy Wind, and he does exactly the same against the second Dragonite. It hurts itself in confusion, and that takes Icy Wind into one-shot range. Up next is that Scarodactyl. It outspeeds us, uses Rock Slide and we flinch, but our Quick Claw activates on turn 2 and we knock it out in one shot. We're back onto that pesky Dragonite. We confuse it as Hyper Beam hits us and leaves us on 2 HP. We use an Icy Wind to take it into the yellow and he must recharge so he cannot heal. That just leaves Charizard. We outspeed and Surf is a one shot. We have finally defeated Lance in a time of 1 hour, 34 minutes and 54 seconds. We spent almost 20 minutes at last, but Mantine doesn't care. He got a lead time of 1.35 and 12. Don't you dare go anywhere, though, because Kanto is next. And we are back where it all began, and this music means just one thing. We're going to be going to the game corner. 
But before we go to the game corner, we have to pick up the SS ticket from Professor Elm. We'll now cycle to Cherry Grove City where we say a warm welcome back from the US to our HM friends, Kenya, Abra, Psyduck and Paris. They're a little bit jet lagged, so please do bear with them if they do make some dodgy movements. But now it's time to go into the game corner and spend all of our money. We've got to spend a grand total of 80,000 Poké Dollars on 4,000 coins because we are finally getting rid of Icy Wind. It was really bad in the league and we're going to be upgrading to Ice Beam. So we say goodbye to base 55 power. We poo poo in the face of that and we say hello to base 95 power instead. And now there are only a couple of things left for us to do in the Johto region. The first thing we're going to do is pick up the rare candy here in Mount Mortar. We'll then fly to Olivine City and head west onto Route 40, where Monica of Monday is waiting for us. She's not hiding under that rock though, that was just Mantine getting a little bit confused. She gives us a sharp beak, which will give us a boost to our flying type moves. And the final thing to pick up is the rare candy in the Whirl Islands. And with that, a hop, skip and a jump takes us into Kanto. And the first thing we do in Kanto is the last thing we do in Johto. We've got to pick up another rare candy, this time from the chairman of the Pokemon fan club. So that safely tucked away in our bag, we can make our way towards Celadon City. We've got a few things to pick up here in Celadon City. The first thing we're going to do is go into the cafe and grab the leftovers. I finally relented and changed my routing for these leftovers. We'll grab the PP up from the bush and then we'll try and pick up the badge from Erica's gym. She is a grass type specialist so she's neutral against us and she leads with Tangler. Wing Attack doesn't one shot the Tangler as it starts to drink us with Giga Drain. Two shots later and it goes down though and it's a similar story with the Blossom. Wing Attack just isn't quite strong enough. I don't have too many Ice Beam PP though and I want to preserve those for going through towards the Power Plants. So we Wing Attack against the Victory Bell as it can't really hurt us that much and the final Pokemon is Jumpluff. Jumpluff being four times weak to ice, it makes sense to use one of our Ice Beam PP, and we get the Rainbow Badge in the time of 1 hour, 41 minutes and 16 seconds. Let's now move on to Misty. She is a water type specialist, and water types have been the thorn in our side the entire run. We managed to three shot the Golduck this time though, and we're on to the Quagsire. Quagsire is a bit of much needed relief because of course it's neutral to water, and we're on to the Lapras. We wing attack the Lapras and it uses Perish Song. This is exactly what I didn't want to happen. We are now on a very tight clock. Our Perish count drops all the way to zero and we get knocked out. We have to try once more. This is a real issue when you can't knock out water types. Lapras's Perish Song could stun you for a very, very long time. We're back onto the Lapras and Blizzard misses, so we decide to try and confuse it. Hopefully this time it won't get a Perish Song out. The plan was to keep wing attacking and hope for the best, but the Perish Song came out. We have two turns to knock out this Sami. It's in the green after the first wing attack, but we get a very lucky critical hit to knock it out in two. We're through Misty in a time of 1 hour, 50 minutes and 6 seconds. Let's now move on to Sabrina of Saffron City. She's a psychic type specialist who will lead with Espeon. Espeon sand attacks us, but we manage to knock it out in two, and out comes the Mr. Mime. We hit through the sand attack twice in a row to knock it out, and the final Pokemon is Alakazam. Psychic hits us for very little damage as Surf takes it deep into the red. She then gets into a healing loop, and that means we can Surf all over again, and it turns out it was a damage range. Time of 1 hour, 51 minutes and 3 seconds for Sabrina. Let's move on to Surge. Surge is the gym leader where we should have the most trouble on paper. However, we are now massively overleveled, and none of Surge's Pokemon has very good special defense at all. So we are just sweeping up with Surf. The Electabuzz doesn't put up any resistance, and he's got two Electrode left to go. We outspeed the Electrode at our level, we grow to level 59, and with that we have defeated Surge in a time of 1 hour, 52 minutes and 26 seconds. We're halfway through our Cantonian badge quest now, and we have a little bit of light relief with the next two gyms. First up is Brock, the rock type specialist, and this is just plain easy for Mantine. We knock all of his Pokemon out in one shot. This was a much needed respite for Mantine. We have had an awful lot of trouble in places we shouldn't have had trouble in in this run, so Mantine getting a nice clean run through a gym really boosts his confidence. And we've defeated Brock in a time of 1 hour, 53 minutes and 38 seconds. Let's now sail the open seas once more and head towards Cinnabar Island. On Cinnabar Island, Blue is going to be waiting for us. Blue, of course, replacing Giovanni, who should have been the 8th gym leader in this run. But of course, we are taking a little break from Fire Red so I can improve my gameplay. Blue tells us all about the volcano that's erupted, and we'll take this opportunity to pick up the hidden rare candy there. And now it's time to take on Blaine. 
In terms of weeks that a gym leader has had, Blaine really could have had a better one than this one. He's just lost his house in the eruption there, and then I'm rocking up with a bunch of water-type Pokémon. It's just really not fair on him, so we'll just have to take care of his Pokémon once and for all, and then leave and never return. Hopefully he won't be that upset with us. Time of 1 hour 55 minutes and 5 seconds for Blaine. Our penultimate gym leader is possibly the easiest gym leader we'll take on. It's Janine. Janine, of course, is the daughter of Koga, and she's a Poison-type specialist, and honestly, we're the toxic one is here. We're going in almost double her level, and we just knock out all of her Pokemon in one shot. I really, really had high hopes for Janine when I first saw her, but honestly, she is just a bit of a pushover. Time of 1 hour 55 minutes and 47 seconds. It's time for our final gym badge. It's Blue, the new Viridian City leader, and he leads with Pidgeot. And I saw something I've never seen in-game before with this Pidgeot. The mirror move failed. I didn't even know that was a possibility. Shows how often we knock out the Pidgeot in one shot, though. We're on to the Alakazam now, though, and it gets into Recovering Loop, which means we knock it out in just two shots. Up next is Rhydon, and Rhydon is four times weak to Surf, so we knock it out in one shot. The next Pokémon is Gyarados. We have had a lot of misgivings with Gyarados in this run, and this one is no exception either. Hyper Beam hits for a critical hit, and Wing Attack doesn't knock it out, so he heals up and we have to restart the battle. We're back onto the Pidgeot, and this time I use Ice Beam straight away. He Wing Attacks for a teeny tiny bit of damage, and we're on to the Alakazam. We use Surf against the Alakazam as Psychic hits us for a little bit of damage. He uses Recover and it's two shots with Surf once more. Up next is a little bit of a respite with Rhydon. Rhydon is four times weak so it goes down straight away and we're back on that pesky Gyarados. We try confusing it this time and it hurts itself in confusion. We start Ice Beaming it because I think that's the best move we have in the circumstance and a lucky critical hit knocks it out. That brings us onto the Arcanine with extreme speed. Surf knocks it out in one quick and easy shot though and the final Pokemon is Executor. We Wing Attack it as he starts to take in sunlight but it's all too little too late for the Executor. We knock him out and we get a badge time of 1 hour 59 minutes and 26 seconds. And with that, there is only one challenge left to go. We speak to Professor Oak, who will unlock Mount Silver, where the big final boss of this run is waiting for us. It is Red. Now let me know, how well do you think Mantine will do? We're over the two-hour mark already. Do you think we're going to struggle like we did with Lance, or do you think we'll get a quick time? Let me know in the comments down below, and we will see how accurate everyone's predictions are. But now it is time for Red. He leads with Pikachu, the Pikachu outspeeds, and it knows Thunder. Even with our huge special defense, I think it will be curtains for Mantine if we get hit by even one of them. And our Surf does not one-shot. We get hit by Thunder, and it's good night and thank you for living. Normally we would use the rare candies in a pattern of 3-3-4, three, three, however I tried after 3 rare candies and made no progress whatsoever, so we're going to jump straight to level 67. Pichu's Thunder misses and it's still not quite a one shot, however he's stuck in a healing loop, we get a critical hit, and we at least get to see his other Pokemon. Espeon Psychic hits for roughly a third damage as Surf does just under half on the Espeon. Psychic takes us into the yellow as we confuse it. It hits through the confusion and we're deep into the red. Espeon knocks itself out and we'll at least get to say hello to the Snorlax. Surf does very little at all, it's time for more rare candies. There is no way we're getting through at our current level. It's time to go at level 71 and hope for the best. It's now a one shot on the Pikachu and we're on to the Espeon. We confuse it straight away, but Espeon still outspeeds. We're just going to surf. It's our strongest move at this point, even though we have very limited PP. Espeon hits itself in confusion once, but does hit us with a second Psychic, and we're on to the Snorlax. We decide to confuse the Snorlax to try and stop it going to sleep, but Body Slam deals great damage. Our special defense is great, but our physical defense, not so much. We're back onto the Pikachu, as that was an unwinnable battle. Pikachu goes down in one shot, and it's Espeon time again. This time, Espeon uses Reflect on turn one and confuses itself on turn two. I accidentally hit it with another Confuse Ray, so I suppose it's doubly confused. It definitely works on that turn, though, and we freeze it solid. That's what I was hoping for. I want to save my Surfs for Snorlax. We recover a little bit with the leftovers, and we get to confusing the Snorlax. It hurts itself, and that means we can use Surf. Snorlax snaps out of confusion and uses Amnesia, so we're going to have to change tacks. I start off confusing it, and then I get a very lucky freeze from Ice Beam. 
this could be the break we were waiting for. We start chipping away at Surf, wasting all that PP, but the Snorlax goes down. Out comes Blastoise, and we confuse it straight away. He's got Blizzard, but our high special defense is coming into play here. Hitting himself in confusion will really help the battle as well. We are very lucky in the sense that Red will only ever heal his Pikachu, so we only have to knock it out once, and we have to rely on confusion luck. We got very lucky with the Snorlax, and we're getting very lucky with the Blastoise because we knock it out after several hits. We get a little bit of respite with Venusaur because we have Ice Beam. Venusaur uses Sunny Day, which means it doesn't even bother trying to attack us. However, Sunny Day means we're going to have to pivot to Ice Beam. Ice Beam's dealing a half-decent amount of damage, but Wing Attack really is chipping away at us. Those leftovers are coming into play as we take the Charizard into the red. We survive on two, and we knock out the Charizard in a time of two hours, five minutes, and 24 seconds. Mantine had a lovely bit of symmetry between Lance and Red, surviving on 2 HP to get the win both times. And a time of 2 hours, 5 minutes and 24 seconds puts Mantine in 27th place on the leaderboard, right in between Quagsire and Hypno. So not the fastest time in the world by a very long shot, but still a very solid try from Mantine. I am very much looking forward to the redo of Mantine. Maybe Hidden Power Ice will shave off about 20 minutes off our time. At the bottom of the leaderboard, unfortunately, we still have Macargo with a time of 3 hours 47 minutes, and there's no change to the top 10. But with that, we are done. I'm going to say thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. The Fire Red content is coming back very soon, as soon as I'm a little bit better at the game. But in the meantime, if you're enjoying the Crystal content, please do consider subscribing. If you enjoyed this video, please do leave it a like. If you've got anything at all to say, leave it in the comments below. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash trainersquidgy. And until next time, I'll say thank you for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.